Okay, time to talk. I know this looks like a mess over here, but uh, while I'm testing some other things, I had some time to actually uh, test this guy a little bit. The Terra Master Das. I'm not sure if you remember the video I made, but since I've made the video, I've actually unlisted it. So if you do want to check it out, I'm still going to leave it in the description uh, below so you can check it. So I'm not like hiding what I said, but I do need to clarify a few things. And also, let's clarify this video sponsor. Looking for a cheap way to license your windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So let's explain what happened and like start from the beginning so everyone's got the story straight, right? So Terra Master reached out and said like, do you want to test any of our products? I said, look, that looks interesting, that, that does. What I read briefly from the website and what I talked to the the person, I can't remember what their name was. There was a person from Terra Master who, who like gave me some of the information. So I said, how does this work? How does that work? Can you connect many devices to it? I said, yeah, no problem. Why I thought this was interesting is because I was looking for a device that two hosts or editors or computers whatever you want to name them can connect at the same time because often we're working on a project that has you know like video editing and then I'm editing the thumbnails or doing something else at the same time but I'd like them all to be in the same place rather than us constantly like transferring files between the computers it's not very efficient and very time consuming so this device looked on the surface like a perfect thing look we've got five drives we could fill them with SSDs or hard drives or something like that. There's two Thunderbolt ports in the back. Two of us can connect to it and boom, shakalaka. Uh, we can just, you know, work on it and it's going to be super fast because they advertise speeds of uh, 1035 megabytes per second up to it. But then a few people commented who actually used the device uh, on the previous video, which I've actually pinned and I answered them as well. But basically this device actually isn't quite what I imagined it to be. So finally, I have some drives that I, I can actually test this with. I'm using the Seagate Airwolf 125 SSDs. They're 960 gigabytes in size, SATA SSDs, NAS rated, and there's five of them inside. Read and write speed is roughly about 550 megabytes per second, something like that. But because we're going to rate them, that's what's actually going to matter, the sequential read and write speed after the rate. Then how the testing goes is I've connected one Thunderbolt port to this Asus ProArt StudioBook uh, laptop and then we can you know get the read and write speeds basically. Number one thing is that it's not quite plug and play. You do have to install the drivers, go to their website, install the drivers and then actually there isn't a software that you just you know kind of launch from your computer it's kind of like a web interface based like very similar to like um what you'd see like a nas setup or something like that but it looks very very um it type of thing it's not like a nice very simplistic software it's it's very like you know clunky like looks like windows 98 basically as you can see on some of the b-roll so there is a little bit of setup to do in order to actually get this going there secondly the two Thunderbolt ports in the back you can't actually use two um, devices at the same time to connect to it. They are for daisy chaining which I'm quite mad about because I very specifically asked them this in the first place from Terramaster and they said yeah no problem but then after the video I was like wait a second you said this is the can you connect two devices and they said no 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 only one and Thunderbolt port, uh, 3 is daisy chaining so I'm a bit confused about that. Maybe they were confused about that as well. Something got miscommunicated there. But here's me making this video straight. Basically, you can only connect one device to this at the same time. You can't have two people accessing this storage pool at the same time, only one at the same time. So basically that Thunderbolt part is for daisy chaining. So it can pass through. For example, if I use one of the SSDs, Okay, I've got this Orico, um, you know, external SSD, which is 40 gigabits rated speeds. I can put it in the back there in the other Thunderbolt pod and then listen to this. Do you hear that? Now it's come up actually on my PC, even though I'm not connected, you know, 
directly to it that port just connects something else to it so the reason for that is that if you are already using the thunderbolt port to access the storage media if you want to use it for something else to access uh, you know another piece of um, storage or something else then you can daisy chain them together and you're not going to lose the port on your laptop for example this laptop here has only one port so it is kind of useful still that you do get that underline it one more time you can't connect two things to this storage at the same time so it's basically just one massive piece of external ssd like this one but you have another port in the back of it if you want to split your thunderbolt signal well you don't really split it you can just get another pod right then we need to talk about speeds and um, there was someone commenting that i've pinned there as well that they only got 500 megabytes per second kind of read and write speeds they were using iron wolf pro 16 terabyte drives they're quite good so you get drives as well but i did some own testing um, I used these SSDs and the speeds I got were quite good and actually the advertised speeds what they were saying as well. I did RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6 um, tests. So RAID 0 we got about 500 megabytes per second read and 340 megabytes per second write speeds. RAID 1 we got 1026 megabytes per second read speeds and about 327 megabytes per second write speeds. With RAID 5, I got the best results at 1,219 megabytes per second read speeds and 968 megabytes per second write speeds, which are very, very good speeds. And then with RAID 6, I got read speeds of 930 megabytes per second and write speeds of 363 megabytes per second. Also, what I wanted to do is test and uh, not just like a benchmark, but also drag some files across and see how fast did they transfer, right? I had two massive folders of files, like 200 gigabytes files, and they were exactly the same files. I just made a copy of them from the NVMe inside this laptop to the DA. So the NVMe is not the bottleneck, it's Gen 4 NVMe, so very, very fast speeds. But then transferring the files over with like two batches of files, the combined speed was around 900 plus or well, 925 megabytes per second something like that and then the single uh, file as well when i transferred that was roughly about the same 912 megabytes per second so actual transferring files were quite fast now you might be saying but the website says 40 gigabits per second interface if you you know divide 40 gigabits per second to gigabytes per second or megabytes per second it's miles more than what they advertised but basically this is one of the confusing things about the marketing whenever you see something about 40 you know gigabits per second um kind of speeds what it actually means is the the connection is 40 gigabits per second speed so basically this cable can handle 40 gigabits per second but it's not really the host that can transfer this think of this like a highway where cars travel right each lane can go certain speeds and combined you know if you combine them you can have that many cars but each section of this like 40 gigabits per second interface is actually limited to certain amount for example data is only don't quote me in this like maybe 10 gigabits or something like that or 20 gigabits then some of the is video is certain amount of gigabits in that 40 gigabits kind of bandwidth then some of this is read and some of this is write the one way or the other way so you're not going to get 40 gigabits one way and 40 gigabits the other way this data will be transferred like i don't know 20 25 gigabits per second don't quote me on this um i don't know exactly the same numbers by heart now that's basically how it works is that Confusing? Is that clear? So Immortal Zod who commented, he said that he got with his hard drives about 500 megabytes per second and me with the SSDs got one 1000 megabytes per second. Then it kind of makes sense whereas my, if my SSDs are actually, you know, per SSD are like double the speeds of his hard drives, they kind of make sense. But I'd love to know if anyone has this and if they have hard drives, I don't have that many hard drives and I can't pull them out from my NAS because, you know, I'm using the data actually over there. So I can't test RAID 5 with actual hard drives. I'd love to know if someone has this, what speeds do they get with hard drives? Terramaster has said that with the hard drives, they ran some, um, I think, Iron Wolves as well. 
uh, Sega drives and with RAID 5, 5 drives in the bay, they managed to get 1035 megabytes per second uh, speed. I'm not sure about that. I'd love to, someone to confirm that. So then now, knowing the actual performance and specs and how this drive works, do I recommend this and who is this for? To have this and fill it with SSDs, it's very, very expensive. And I'd rather get a NAS instead of this one, if you if you think what, what this is for. I know the Thunderbolt connection is nice there, but kind of unnecessary. It could be also like a USB-C, maybe 20 gigabits per second uh, connection, you know, Gen 2 X2 slots or something like that then we could get the same speed or even 10 gigabit speed, USB 3 Gen 2, basically a connection there as well. And then we could get, get two of them. So I'm a bit confused about this product. Like, like who would actually use this? Because the way I plan to use this, obviously you can't use it like that. So if you're watching this, I'd love to know if you would be able to use this somehow or how would you use this and why would people use this honestly i'm very very interested about this please let me know in the comment section below i'll, I'll meet you down there now i might use this as a, a hard drive dock basically i'm gonna put hard drives in there and then have it just kind of off you know and then when i want to use the hard drives i don't have to put them in a dock or somewhere like that i can just literally plug it in and then use a laptop or something that has a Thunderbolt connector and then see my hard drives there and perhaps, you know, transfer something across. But even then, I, I just don't know quite like what I would use it for. Now, is it not what they advertised? Have they lied about the advertising? No, not really. As you can see, I did get the advertised speeds and actually slightly better ones uh, with the, you know, RAID 5. I got like extra 150 megabytes per second. Mine was 1.2 gigabytes per second. They said only like 1.03 gigabytes per second. But it is confusing marketing. And I was actually not, not a victim of that, but that's how it, I got the perception what this is. Ah, I can connect two of these to it. This speed sounds fantastic. You know, let's use it, but it's not quite exactly that and i'm gonna leave it there but if you do want to build yourself a pc or create a pc best bang for buck pc check out the best bang for buck series in the description below okay so you can find yourself a pc configure it to your budget there's budgets all the way from 750 dollars to five thousand dollars so you can find the correct budget for you there's upgrades for you downgrades for you there so you can really configure the pc for you and there's build guides software guides set it up guides driver guides everything's down there when you follow these build guides over there so go check them out in the description below thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye